Welcome to this Moser online video on scientific notation. So the first thing we want to do is just kind of do a brief review of how to write values in scientific notation. So we're going to start with a really big number and really big numbers have positive exponents. And so if I take this really big number and I assume that my decimal place is at the very end of my number, I'm just going to jump that decimal place back and I'm going to count the number of times I jump back. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to move that decimal right to this location. And when I do that, I end up with a number that is 5.67 times 10 to the tenth because we moved that 10 times. Whenever you write in scientific notation, you want one value left of the decimal and all other values are going to be right of the decimal. And so that would be the value written in scientific notation. If we have a small number, they have negative exponents. And so we're going to move our decimal instead of moving it to the left to establish our number, we're going to move it to the right. So in this case, we're going to take the decimal that's already here and we're going to move it back one, two, three, four, five, six places and put it right here. So that's going to give us 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, so small numbers, negative exponents, big numbers, positive exponents. So how do we calculate values in scientific notation? Um, using a calculator. Well, it's a good idea to look up a YouTube video on your specific calculator um, and using that in scientific notation. I am available to help with that in class as well. Uh, most Texas Instrument calculators have what we call an EE button, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment on some pictures. If you have an EE button, use the EE button. Some calculators have a times 10 to the n button. There's actually a specific TI model that does that or possibly an EXP button. And so if you have a different version of a calculator, you might see a button that looks like that. So here we have three different models of TIs and the EE button that we're really looking for, let's get a color that will hopefully show up on all of these. I'll just go ahead and stick with that color, is right above the 7. It's this button right above the 7, and you will see that in the same location on all three different models. Now, like I said, there is one model, um, and it's going to be a small EE that shows up above those, um, those ones, so you have to actually use the second button along with the EE button in order to actually calculate that. And on my calculator, I actually have the same type of a setup here on the left side of my screen. So I'll show you how to enter in some of those values as well. Your displays may display with just one E or it may display with a times 10. It just depends upon how your display works. So how do we calculate vi values in scientific notation using your mind? Because sometimes we can't use a calculator or we don't have a calculator. Um, so the why is, well, it's a good idea to be able to estimate that, to have some good number sense, because sometimes we need to double check to make sure that we're entering our values into our calculator properly. Um, and so the way that we do that is we do the math with the actual number values. And then if we're adding, we want to be sure that our numbers that we're adding are in, have the same exponent value. And so we can move our decimal to get those in the same exponent value if they're not. Same thing goes for if you're subtracting. Um, if you're multiplying, you want to add the exponents, and if you're dividing, you want to subtract the exponents. So that's kind of the general rule of thumb. I'm going to try to explain briefly how to do that with a couple of examples so you can see, see how we do that. 
Um, it's really important if you are in AP chemistry to know how to do this because on the multiple choice portion of the test, you do not get a calculator. And there are sometimes values that you need to, to calculate in your mind. And so we want to know how to estimate those. And it's just good for, for determining number sense when we're actually calculating values. Okay, so let's do adding and subtracting in scientific notation first. So we're going to add um, in the first one here. So we have 1.3 plus 5.7. So if I'm just doing that, we want to make sure that we're in the same exponent. So in this case, I have 10 to the third. So I'm good to go. So I can either punch this into my calculator, which I'll show you how to do in just a moment, or I can add these up. So 1.3 plus 5.7 is going to give me 7.0 okay and then our value is still going to remain times 10 to the third okay i'll show you how to do that in the calculator too so i'm going to do 1.3 and you can kind of see my keys will um, kind of gray a little bit as i do that and then i'm going to hit the second button I'm gonna hit the EE -E button, that button above the seven. It's gonna only display one E, okay? I don't put 10 in there, because that E represents times 10, and then I'm gonna get three. And if I do this with the EE -E button, I do not need to use parentheses at all. So now I'm gonna hit plus, I'm gonna hit 5.7 second EE -E to the third, and then enter. Okay, now in this case, my calculator is not defaulting to scientific mode. That may happen for you sometimes. So if you want to double check values, if you're writing them, if you want to display them in scientific mode, if you go to mode in most of your calculators, and like I said, some of them are a little bit different, um, there's a place that you can switch that over to scientific. You can also YouTube that or you can ask me in class. And so this one doesn't allow me to do that quite the same way, but I'm going to put in 7,000 and enter, and then it's going to show me 7E3. That means 7 times 10 to the third. Okay, so just so you know that if you see that display. Some calculators will show you 7 and then times 10, and then it will have the value. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. Let's take a look at the next one. So in the next one, we do not have the same exponent values. And so we want to get those in the same value. This is where I find people get tricked up. Personally, I find it's easier for me to enter this into my calculator. But if that's not an option, we're going to make these the same exponent by moving this decimal place to get this to be times 10 to the fifth. Okay, so that's the possibility or negative fifth, sorry because that's a negative six. So I moved it one to the left and that became a little more positive for my exponent. So that's one trick that you can do and you can still do the math the way we did or we can go ahead and enter this into the calculator as well. So 4.7 second, the EE -E button and negative five. And then we're gonna subtract from that 2.6 second, E, e. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my negative 6, that original number, okay? Not 0.26 times 10 to the negative 5th. I'm going to hit enter. Now this is giving us 4.44. I'm going to apply sig fig rules. I know that you may or may not have gone over sig fig rules recently, and so that's in a different um, MOV. So in this case, it should be 4.4 times 10 to the negative 5th. And that is our value for this one. And if you don't know what sig figs are, don't worry about it yet. We will get there. Okay, if we are going to multiply and divide in scientific notation, um, if we are multiplying, we add our exponents. And if we're dividing, we subtract our exponents. So if we're going to do the math, I'm going to show you how the mental math part of this would work. And then we'll also enter it into the calculator. So I'm going to do 4.2, we're going to do the math with the numerical values first, times 6.9, okay, so I'm going to write out my process, and then I'm going to do times 10, and then in that upper parentheses, I'm going to do 12 plus 8. 
Now the really good thing about this is if I just look at this, I should say 12 plus eight, I should get an exponent that's really close to 20. Now, depending upon what happens, if I multiply 4.2 times 6.9, I'm gonna end up with a number that's greater than nine. And so this is actually gonna give us an exponent of 21, okay? Um, but that's a couple different ways to do that. And if I wanna simplify this in my calculator, I can do 4.2 times 6.9, okay? Um, and I'm still in scientific, so it looks kind of goofy. And then I can do my 12 plus eight, and I can actually work it out in separate, separate fashions. If I wanna just go ahead and plug that into my calculator as the whole thing, I'm gonna do 4.2 second EE to the 12th times 6.9 second EE to the eighth. And I end up with 2.89. And with sig figs, it's gonna be 2.9 times 10 to the 21st. So that is actually the answer, okay? And don't worry if, if you're not having to estimate, you're not an AP, I really encourage you to use your calculator. But if you have a general estimation of about what your um, exponent value should be, you're a lot less likely to make calculation errors or to catch those calculation errors. Okay, let's go ahead and do this last one. So in this case, 10 minus two, we wanna make sure that we are going to subtract these ones. So 10 minus two is going to give us an exponent value of 10 to the eighth at the end. So we should see something that's close to 10 to the eighth. So 18.3 second EE to the 10th divided by 5.9 second EE to the second. Okay, enter that in and I end up with 3.1 E, so we see that E on the side there, which is times 10 to the eighth. And that is how we write, calculate in scientific notation.